This is Ben Allen, founder of BC Allen Publishing Group and Tonic Books, a partnership publishing house. We made this interview for you. Why? Because it is our mission to usher into existence the world's next great wave of life-changing, world-altering books. One of those books could be inside you right now. And no writer can go from idea to bestseller alone. No writer has to. Be sure to check out the other resources we've created for aspiring and established authors and the dozens of interviews we've done with some of the world's best, brightest, and most successful New York Times bestselling authors, world-impacting movement builders, and influencers that reach millions of lives. Do enjoy. So I'm here with David Allen, uh, an absolute uh, kind of personal hero of mine, somebody who's built some really remarkable, incredible things in the world out of some really brilliant, accessible, simple, life-changing ideas. And I'm just so excited. I've been anticipating this call uh, basically since we put it on the books. And I've probably overprepared a little bit. I uh, did a ton of research again um, on, on, and to refamiliarize myself with the, with the work that you've done. And I'm just super excited to have you here, David. And I'm going to read your bio in just a second. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Delighted. Uh, it, it, great work, it seems, that you're doing to help folks yeah, thank you. kind of in the same yeah, we're trying. Framework, framework like me. Call, you know, how the heck do you take something you kind of came up with and get it to the world? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. And I can't wait to explore those ideas with you. So let me read that bio. This very impressive bio, by the way. So one of the world's most influential thinkers on productivity, David's 35 years experience as a management consultant and executive coach have earned him the titles of personal productivity guru by Fast Company Magazine and one of America's top five executive coaches by Forbes Magazine. I mean, that alone is pretty, pretty remarkable stuff. His best-selling book, The Groundbreaking, Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity, has been published in 30 languages, and the GTD method, which it's known as, is descri- uh, it describes, has become a global phenomenon. David, his company, and his partners are dedicated to teaching people how to stay relaxed and productive in our fast-paced world. The American Management Association has ranked him in the top 10 business leaders. So we had a little uh, false start a minute ago, and we began talking about how this stuff feels like this is quite the resume that I think a lot of the authors I work with and, and some of the authors that, uh, that are going to be listening to this interview here, I think would love to have a bio like that, that is just so full of this incredible authority and, and, and evidence of impact. And, and it's amazing, in our, in our last uh, brief little interaction there, you were saying that this feels very natural to you. It almost feels surprising to hear those things. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Well, you know, Ben, come on, when I came up with this stuff, I first of all came up with it for myself. So a lot of this mm-hmm. discovery of the methodology that I, that I uncovered or recognized, I didn't make it up. I just recognized what it is that we do when things really work. But I recognized it at a fairly essential level. What are the essential principles that go on when we have a good day versus a bad day? And what makes those the, the difference? And also, you know, a real attraction to clear space inside my own head. So it was really my own personal self-development game where through martial arts and meditation, and spiritual practices and whatever, I discovered the sort of the sexy, cool place of nothing on your mind. You know, mind like water as the martial arts, you know, yes. would, describe, would describe that. And then as I got, life got more complex, I said, phew, man, that's pretty easy to screw up mind like water <laughs> when you got, you know, 200 emails staring at you and, you know, and stuff, you know, coming at you right and left. So I said, you know, I kept, I was hungry for myself and certainly open for uh, really cool things that would give me more freedom inside my own head. And so I began uh, incorporating those and again, starting my own consult, little consulting practice back there uh, at the same time turned around and started using these techniques for my, that work for me with my clients and work for them too. And these mm-hmm. techniques gave them more control, more focus, more capability without having to go transform themselves. If you just, hey, do this little behavior and watch what happens and, and, it, and it worked and sort of invariably. And so, you know, this has been sort of a natural process for me to just take this material that worked for me then start to expand it with a, my own little, you know, boutique kind of consulting practice. And then suddenly the corporate world, somebody in the corporate world saw what I was doing and said, wow, let's come in and, you know, th- David, we need this in our culture. What you're, pro- what seems to be that you're producing for individuals, you know, could you design a training or a seminar around this material instead of just, you know, you know, consulting one-on-one. 
So that's what I did back in 1983 and 84. And then that put me, that threw, sort of threw me into the corporate training world. And then I spent about 20 years trying to figure out what I'd figured out. You know, I was still <laughs> not particularly aspirational or entrepreneurial. Frankly, I was more of an educator and a researcher and a little bit of a motivator, I guess, you know, about this material than, you know, than trying to big, build a big business and then, you know, trying to make a lot of money out of it. I was more interested in just having a good job and doing good work for people that seemed to work for everybody and fascinated that people thought this was cool stuff and they were willing to pay me money to do it. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we're yeah. really cool. But it took about, you know, it took a couple of decades for me to go through this stuff and then realize at some point, you know, having then taken this material into some of the most challenging environments professionally you could ever imagine and having it go viral inside of there, um, then I, I guess this is bulletproof. And nobody else seems to have come up with what I came up with. And so I had a bunch of advisors, you know, good friends of the court of mine that, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do with this little business that I had. And they said, well, David, write, write a business book. I went, oh, my God, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so it was 90, 1997. And I said, okay, well, I guess maybe I should write the manual. I guess it's time to do that. So I had no expectation about, you know, whether this would work and what way it would work, but I just needed to kind of get all this stuff out of my head. I never had enough time or bandwidth to be able to share with everybody all the implications, applications, and, and subtleties of this little methodology that had actually is pretty profound. And so I said, okay, well, there it took it off my someday maybe list and said, okay, now it's on my project list called Publish Book. <laughs> So that was a four That's year, cool. somewhat agonizing process to try to figure out how to take 20 years of my life work or 25 years and, and put it into a manual and make sure. Yeah, that, that I, I, man, there's, there's so much in all that. Like the, the, it's so fascinating to hear about the, the origins of it. It, it. it sounded like you almost kind of uh, just fell into it. You wanted to research this stuff in your own life and see how it worked. And then, and then it, let me see if I got it right. People started reaching out to you for, for help with this material or did you start making it public and then people wanted help or? Well, sure. You know, I was, I was writing the coattails of the, the in the eighties and nineties of the, the popularity of time management that became, you know, a very popular yeah. topic, all the tools, all the gear, all the, personal planners, all that stuff was showing up in the 80s. So I was really riding on the coattails of that because my stuff sort of fits in that venue. You know, if you don't understand the subtleties of it, you'd probably call this, if you had to call it something, you'd probably call it time management, but you can't manage right. it. It's really about something other than that. Uh, yes. But it does solve the problems that people think they have when they think they need a time management problem, prioritizing, yeah. you know, stress management, organization, you know, you know, clarity, all that, all that stuff. That people say I'm behind the curve on that. This actually handles all of it. So this fit in that game, and so I was able to ride that game. And so my trainings were then quite popular. Um, yeah, gotcha. but the, the, the unique aspect of what then showed up as GTD and getting things done, you know, that's one of, another reason to write the book was I realized this is you know I I really need to to put the manual out there and you really need to put the manifesto out there about what this is. And it's not, you know, what all those other things are, you know, it look kind of looks like it, but it's different than that. And I, 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 I think I just needed to make sure that I had whatever that was unique expression that I had or, or understanding I had that I could put it in some sort of form. So in case it got run over by a bus, you know, people could, <laughs> could still get it. And by the way, you know, Ben, that was a big milestone for me. I, I knew that if you gave me two or three or four days personally with you and me one-on-one -on -one desk side, I knew you would get this. But yeah. to try to put this in some sort of virtual form that I'm not there, but you could just pick up some book and somehow get whatever it is that you get. That was really unknown to me. And so you know, once the book, you know, like a big milestone for me was in 2001, early, you know, January 2001, when this hit the bookshelves, Barnes and Noble, uh, you know, that weekend, I got an email from a woman in Philadelphia that said, by the way, David, I just picked up your book off the shelf. I read it, it blew me away. I went home, implemented it, changed my life. I went, oh my God, wow. I've done it. <laughs> but we've been able to oh, so virtualize this intellectual property in such a way that yeah. I did not have to be there. But that was a big that was a big step. So in a way, this is, you know, still relatively given, you know, the, the, the maturity of IP out there and how it, how it, you know, then 
migrates into the world, matures in the world. This is actually quite new that we actually thought that we could actually virtualize the getting things done methodology. And that's, yeah. that's been a lot of what our business model has been actually since the success of the book was to make the decision to say, okay, let's scale this globally as opposed to just keep it boutique, you know, in my own sort of speaking, you know, world around the book. Oh man. Okay. So many directions I want to go in. I'm just thinking <laughs> of the people listening to this who like want to build these, who want to build something extraordinary. I mean, you've done it. You're like one of these guys that's, you, you've built a global phenomenon. We, in, our, in my business, we call it building a movement. Um, and you've done it, man. It's so cool to, to, to hear about this. So a couple of questions, there's different directions we could go in. Um, I think I want to hear first, like a little bit about the process of writing. How did you apply getting things done methodology to actually writing the book? Tell us a little bit about that four year okay. uh, process. Pretty simple. Someday maybe list, right? Yeah. Write book, right? <laughs> One day I went, okay, that moves from someday maybe to a project. Right. So I just mm. moved it from one list to the next. Of course, when you move uh -huh. it to the project list, you can't sit there and go, wait a minute. I can't have a project without a next action on it. David, what's your next action? Oh, God. Okay. So I have to sit and <laughs> agonize and be a student of my own stuff. <laughs> so I figured the well, next thing was, how do, I, how do you write a book? Right. So the next step was surf the web about uh, how do you write books? You know, mm -hmm. And how do you publish a book? And what's the process of getting a book published? And so I did mm -hmm. you know, quite a bit of many, many weeks of trying to figure out, well, how, how do you do that? And I think at the time, and this was 96, 97, I think there were about four or five books out there, three or four books anyway, about how do you write a book proposal? How do you, get, how do you sell a book to a, to a publisher? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, lots of different things. And so I devoured all of those to try to figure out, okay, so you have to write, uh, you have to write a business plan for your book. Yeah. You, you need to write a sample chapter or two. You need to go, yeah, 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 yeah. And those were agonizing processes in and of themselves. I also had a couple of friends. By that time I had people, clients and friends who were in the publishing business. So I was tapping them. Oh, yeah. You know, a good friend of mine was head of adult book at, at Houghton Mifflin in Boston. And, oh, yeah. and he was a big champion of mine. And he said, gee, David, I don't know if you can put you in a book. So again, he was <laughs> one of those kind of healthy skeptics about whether I, I could actually do that. And he said, by the way, if, if your material is worth, um, if it has a potential of any kind of a global or, or at least national audience or a large audience, as opposed to, you know, the sex life of retired penguins, you know, where, <laughs> you know, the, you, you would need to find the, the publisher and the editor who are specific to that, where you just go right to them. But he said, otherwise, if you do not have a name, you better get an agent. And he said, mm. oh, by the way, my, my next door neighbor happens to be an ex, you know, New York editor, and she is an agent, and she loves, you know, repping people where writing is not their day job, and turned me on to Doe Coover, who's been my agent. Oh, yeah you know, for 15 years. And so, oh, wow. uh, so I said, okay. And by the way, I made a couple of mistakes because before that I actually sent a little bit of a manuscript to a couple of editors or whatever. And that was absolutely the wrong call because then they, they get out of your loop because a good editor, I mean, a good agent really can help you coach you about right. how to frame this for the right people. And because she was an ex editor from New York, she knew that world and she knew those, those folks there. So, you know, thank goodness I didn't make too many false starts, you know, that, that would have really screwed up the, the ability to be able to take this where it went. Uh, yeah. So that, that was, yeah. that, that was the early, the early game of this. So, but it took, it took a, took a year to figure out how to do that, how to get the agent. <laughs> and it's funny when I, when I met Doe, uh, you know, she had read, I, I'd written my own version of a proposal, you know, of a, of a business plan for the book. And by the way, if people haven't done that yet, that's an agonizing but very healthy process to sit down and say, okay, what's unique? What's yeah. different? You know, who are you going to talk to? Yep. Different yep. that you're providing that's not out there already. You know, how are you yep. going to do this? By the way, are you out there in the speaking circuit? Do you have, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there because, you know, especially these days, I mean, as you know, the publishing business is deer in the headlights these days. And, oh, it's a total uh, wild world. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so you better have a, you know, they need a good reason to give you any, yeah. any bandwidth of their attention you know, to this. It means it yeah. needs to be, it needs to be 
somewhat framed that this could be a business for them or they could make money off what you're doing. So that's, yeah. but that's a healthy, but agonizing process to sit down and try to figure that out and try to do all that. So I went through all that process, wound up with the agent. What, what are the cool things? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, one you, of the, you laid it all out. You did the project. Yeah. I did. One of the yeah. interesting things was, you know, when I gave Doe my, my proposal in my cha sample chapter or two, she said, who wrote this? I said, what do you mean? She said, who wrote this? I said, well, I wrote this. This is my book. She goes, she goes you know, 99%, 95% of the business books are not written by the people that say they're written by. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're all, they're all ghost, right. written, ghost written. So she couldn't yeah. believe that I, you know, because I'd made a reputation pretty much of stand up and doing delivery, but having the combination of the ability to be able to deliver stuff as a stand up person in speaking and then also being, a, being capable of writing was a kind of a rare combination. But Again, my mom was an English teacher, so I knew how to write, and you know, so I had those, I, I had those capabilities. So you know, those things together, she felt enthused about that and was willing to take me on as a client. And worked pretty that's well. awesome. Then, yeah, course, that's then, great. You know, but and, it, took, and, it took that year to get the deal. We only got one offer. Uh huh. And, and this is after you just did the proposal. You had yeah. written the manuscript, right? No, no, yeah, you were just pitching them. Because, you know, the coaching was, come on, you know, how to frame what I was doing. Because my stuff was so, in a sense, universal. It's like, who am I talking to, you know, about this? Who's, who's really going to be listening? I knew by that time, after all these years of working with this material, that it, that it, it worked for kids, it worked for clergy, it worked for stay-at-home dads, it worked for anybody. You know, my, my material is all about you know, if you've got a busy life, how do you stay on top of it? And that, that's for anybody with a busy, busy life. But trying to figure out, wait a minute, if you're trying to sell a book, how do you target that? How do you, how do you focus that there? So trying to, you know, I have about 700 used titles. I'll sell you real, real cheap, you know, for trying to figure out the <laughs> title for this thing. So anyway, figuring that out, getting the proposal, and then, you know, Doe helping me get the deal, you know, with Penguin. Viking, you know, Penguin uh, at, at the time. Yeah, yeah. And they, they were the only folks that bit. And interestingly, of course, the people who didn't bite later on. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, they regret it now, sure. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they missed a call. Yeah, no kidding. What do you think got them to bite? I have a, a, a ton of questions for you, but what do you think got them to bite? I don't know. I think it was the relationship between my agent and the editor. They knew each other. And her belief in your work. Yeah. Yeah. And like I she think, really believed in your work and she was able to communicate that to them. Exactly. And the, you know, and the editor, I think when, when she saw my stuff said, wow, this is, you know, this is useful, you know, cool stuff. This was Janet Goldstein and Janet was great. She went on to then just do her own consulting work to help people, you know, sort of frame books, you know, that they were doing yeah. a little bit similar to you, probably what you're doing. And Janet was great. Yeah, and, and we, a great editor. I mean, and she she gave me fabulous coaching, you know, on writing the book. Oh, that's awesome. What did some of that look like? What what made it so strong, so fabulous? First of all, light touch. She didn't disturb me much at all. Oh. Um, but one of you know one of her most elegant coachings to me was see. <laughs> let me give you a, a quick little microcosm of the four years. First year you know, get an agent, get the deal, frame the thing to begin with next year, write the first draft. But yeah, finish the first draft. I looked at it and went, it's not it. It doesn't do it. Mm. Wow. Threw it away. And wow. renegotiated my Good for line you. and took the next year and wrote another draft because I actually wrote the book the way I actually did a seminar, which actually doesn't work as a book. The book is a very mm. different medium than you know stand-up delivery so anybody listening to this mm. trying to do your stand-up delivery and put it right into a book you know careful cautionary tale because mm. when people read a book they are sitting down at night in front of a fireplace or wherever and they just glancing through this thing and you don't have them a captive audience so it needs to it's a very different it's a very different thing you know and that was that was a big education that that, that i got about that and Janet's coaching to me, one of her best coachings was, she said, David, um, you need to write like you've got your hand on somebody's shoulder. 
That's great. That yeah. was so cool. That was such That's beautiful. That was such a great uh, image and metaphor and 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 context to think about writing. That yeah. you're really you're really in the living room with somebody talking to them about this, as opposed to on stage talking to three hundred people. Yeah, it's great. It's so relaxing. And what it does is, a cre- I, you know, having taught writing for so many years, one of the things I say uh, is that good, like strong, engaging writing, it's, you can learn technique to do that, but really where it comes from is orientation. Mm. And so like that orientation of, you know, connect, like uh, one of my favorite authors, uh, Steve Chandler says, um, when he's writing, it's like, he's just writing a long email, uh, a long email to someone he loves. Mm. And like that context, you know, that orientation creates such an intimate space mm-hmm. and such an authentic space. And, and it's not about like trying to uh, impress somebody with your verbiage or, or, you know, you can't even write ornately and beautifully in that context. But really what's there is like when your hand's on their shoulder is you're just trying to help them. You're just trying to support them and be there for them. Exactly. And I love that. It's beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, and that was the and, and, so and, that, and that's all she did was uh, l- those kind of light touches. But man, that light touch just totally changed how I thought about how I that's even, how I thought how I was writing it. And and did you have trouble staying motivated through the process? Uh, did you you know did you struggle? Did you doubt yourself? Was there what was coming up for you in those couple of years that were or in those four years? I guess no, really, but um, you know, I, I didn't have any. I had no um, qualms that I knew what I was talking about because come on, I spent 25 mm. years doing this, you know, and mm. it was bulletproof. Yeah, so okay. I had no, I wasn't doing a ta-da. I hope this is true. <laughs> this, this, this was like, you know, you know, come on, you know, you, you can't poke, you, there's, you can't poke a hole in this. Nobody has ever done it, you know? So, so I knew that, so I had the confidence of the methodology and the content itself. So, you know, yeah. I guess the struggle was making sure that it showed up in a way, you know, again, when I wrote the first draft, I wrote it like I did the seminar. And then I gave, a, you know, a few friends the, you know, the draft and they said, oh, my God, David, you, you, you hooked me in the first paragraph. I want to know how to do it right away. And the how to do it was like yeah. four chapters down. And I went, OK, that doesn't work. And so I had a dark night of the soul. By the way, it's just interesting mm. for some of you. I mean, you know, I've worked with visualization and affirmations and imagery, and I know the power of that. The first thing I wrote, mm. by the way, were the reviews. It's the first thing. Nice. I, wrote. I love that. I sat down and wrote the reviews and who those might have been written by. And, you know, not that they wrote those reviews, you know, ultimately, but what that did was it raised the bar so high in terms of the quality of this material. That's why the first draft was, didn't please me because it didn't map to yeah. the, what those reviews would have said. And I just threw it away and I just started oh, again. So that took a whole nother year to write the second draft. And it, you know, it was kind of like, well, wait a minute. I, the, Cause I wanted to accomplish several things. I wanted to let people know a, what the methodology was, B, how to implement it if they were interested and C, the, Oh, by the ways, the very subtle sublime stuff that happens. And I tried to get all that in a linear format. It didn't work. So the big aha, mm. you know, the big epiphany one morning was write the book in three parts. So getting things done was then written in three parts. So the first part of it is, okay, you want the methodology? Boom, here it is. Part two, by the way, you want to go implement this? Here's how you do that. Boom. And then part three is, oh, by the way, boom. And that was, it seems common sense now as I look back on it, but you know, that was an agonizing thing to, to to then reconfigure how to structure a book to accomplish the results that I wanted, as opposed to you know some previous thought about you know just getting my material out there. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. So the, uh, no, man, again, you're just inspired. There's so many questions I have for you. <clears throat> One of the things I, I I talk about with my authors, and you mentioned this earlier, is you had uh, you you got an email from somebody after you published the book and, and it was this really inspiring thing that it had helped change their life. I will have authors do this, something just like what you said, write their reviews or write an email thanking them for the book before they've even started. Yeah, and that great. helps with one of the stages in, in the getting uh, things done methodology, which is like, 
creating your outcomes, right? This is about visioning your outcomes. Sure. Um, I, I wonder how, how much did you, could you picture this global phenomenon when you were writing this? Like, was that one of the outcomes you were looking for or was it more like, yeah. I want to get no. the manuscript done and I, I wrote tell a, whole, a little bit about that. I wrote a whole paragraph affirmationally. Wow. This is going there, oh, really? going here. It's, it's, it's affecting these kind of people. I'm getting these kind of results from it. I'm getting this kind of feedback from it. Turns out that that's awesome. way, it way surpassed what I wrote. But, you know, at least it, back then, that was sort of unbelievable to me. But I stretched out at least from where I was. And, and Wow, yeah. Yeah, that's really amazing. What, what were some of the things that you wrote? I want to hear. I'm so curious. I can't remember. As soon as these oh, okay. things occur, <laughs> I throw those things away because I go, well, it happened. You know, so now I've, that's been created in my life. I mean, that, you know, I ran across affirmations and the power of affirmational technology, you know, uh, God, you know, 40 years ago. And so, you know, I, that's how I've yeah. lived life. That's how I've created everything I've done was that way. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes through in the, in the actual methodology, like when you're reading about uh, the getting things done, uh, that, that, that creating the vision, you talk about how it can be motivating and inspiring and also just helps you organize your resources and it does all these different, um, very valuable things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so how did it take off then? So you had, so you, you, you know, you worked with this, uh, this, uh, these amazing editors and these, uh, and these agents, uh, you got the deals, you rewrote the book, which is extraordinary. And I really encourage people listening to this to, to consider that like, not, you know, not now writers can be perfectionists, of course, and they can spend forever rewriting things, but um, really like being brave enough to say, okay, this isn't doing exactly what I want and being able to well, do that. That's a, that's get, a get, advice. get honest friends of the court to read it and give you feedback. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that helps. Great. I mean, and you then, know, you, you don't want to, to some degree, you know, an artist has to be unique and has to stick out in the world and like, you know, screw them if they can't take a joke, you know, so, you know, at <laughs> some point you have to do, say what you want to say the way you want to say it. But then again, yeah. you know, th th that comes back to the old thing called, look, you want to just write your book and then see who buys it. That's another way to do it. Self-publish. You know, that, that's, that's sure. I know people that do that or, Hey, wait a minute. I want to get this message out to a, a lot of people through a large, you know, uh, mechanism, then you, you got a different game to play. So I think defining even what the game is that you want to play with the book, you know, what's your purpose of writing the book, I think, you know, is, yeah. is another question to, to ask and to answer. And another thing, Ben, before I forget it, a very valuable thing that was that, that surprised me, we actually did two line edits, the first edition of getting things done. And first of all, we wanted to make sure that we stripped it and made it as evergreen as possible and strip out all the, as much of the time-based business buzzword stuff that we could. Mm -hmm. So this could be as evergreen nice. as possible in case it happened to hit a nerve out there and be evergreen. And so, and then, you know, Penguin then, then gave it to line editors and I was like, I've never written a book before. What's a line editor going to do? They're going to screw up my voice. They're going to, you know, what is this? And the fascinating thing was <laughs> when you get a really good line editor, what they do is they give, as I described it, they give my prose a bath. Right? <laughs> and <Nice. laughs> not, not only did they um, negate my voice, they enhanced my voice. You know, they took a 25 word sentence and took it down to eight. And it's like, oh my God, mm -hmm. I wish I had said it because that really is much more of the way I would have said it. So, you know, what I did then was I actually took the line edits and re-entered my whole book with the edits so that I could learn how a line editor thinks. That was a fascinating Wow, that process. is amazing. And that tr that's trained me yeah. a lot from, from then on about how to write. You know, just kind of give my own prose a bath before I give it to somebody, <laughs> before I give it to somebody else. You know, wait a minute, with how, yeah. few, how much fewer words could I have said this in a more elegant way? You know, that's such a great That's trick. a great question. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Man, that's amazing. And I, you know, you have this real discipline. I, what I, in the next version, in the most recent version of getting things done, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, the 2015 version. Um, you have uh, a note in there that says you rewrote this book word for word, right? I to did. kind of clean it up and make sure that, yeah, it's incredible, man. That is, it takes such discipline. Uh, well, uh, actually, it's really extraordinary. Actually, no, that, that made it actually was pretty easy. All I had to do was sit back and start to write it again. And say, is this the way I'd say it right now? 
So mm. it was actually more of a fun process than an agonizing process to actually do that. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that, that's so cool, man. And so did you apply, did you apply any of these, uh, you know, for writers, you know, I know you can explain the getting things done in, in a really short, simple way. I've heard you do it in other interviews. And um, is there anything that you could give for writers, like from, the, from your methodology that would be really valuable? Because writers, I think, often, especially if they're working full time in a different job, they, they, one of their great fears is, I don't have the time to do this, or where will I fit it in? Do you have any suggestions for writers coming from that place? Yeah, you know, and I just heard this from Dan Pink, and I don't know if Dan came up with this or he was quoting somebody else, but I'll at least attribute it to, to Dan. And, and, and it's such a truth that amateurs set goals, professionals have a process. Mm, nice. So if you're waiting to feel like you need, I think this is a quote on the end of your thing. If you're waiting to feel like the right time to write, you'll never, you'll never yeah. write. I'm sorry, butt in yeah. chair, boot computer, hit key, you know? Yeah. <laughs> engage, maverick, yeah. engage, maverick, maverick, engage, yeah. engage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it, yeah, get it, make it happen. Well, I'm trying to learn Dutch right now, you know? I'm potentially immigrating to, to, the, to the Netherlands. And the big challenge is 10 minutes a day learning Dutch. You would Duolingo yeah. or Bob, and Bobble. I've got both I've got on my computer, but man, it is so easy to resist that. But just sit your yeah. in the chair, David. Come on, just punch it up. Just spend 10 minutes a day. And, you know, that's every good writer, every good artist, you know, ultimately will tell you, they just get up and, you know, and, and I'm starting to paint now. So I have actually, I've set up my painting wow. you know, table and, and, and easel right in front of me. So I'm staring at my next blank canvas, you know? So it's like, oh God, okay, awesome. let me just go get up and start to engage. And I think that's, the, you know, this is one of those common sense things, of course. Yeah, just get, in, get going. Cause you know, anybody who's done any writing at all knows that you don't know what you know until you start to write. You know? That's and it, so, man, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> you've got to crank it up and just start the flow. Yeah. Start the consciousness flow. And, you know, it's, again, that perfectionism. It's got to be good. Oh, God, I don't know what to write yet. It's not the right thing. and It's not the right time. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and again, you yeah. know, back to, you know, the, the, the war of art. Um, yep. You know, yep. wonderful book. That, I'm sorry, the thing that's, that's closest. That's a good book. The thing that's closest to your soul is the thing you resist the most. So if writing yeah, matters it. to you, the thing that matters to you is the thing you're probably going to resist more than anything. You know, to get involved in. So mm. build the habit of just boot computer, butt in chair, hit key. You know? Yeah. Write a shitty first that's draft. You know, as, as you know, that's the yeah. best, best way to write any book. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome, man. Well, dude, I thank you. I want to just, I, I'm acknowledging the time here as well. And I just want to thank you so much for being here with us. I'd like to end with a couple of things. Um, one, uh, where can people find you? Mm -hmm. You know, this year. Your, your technology is so incredibly valuable, not just for writers, but for everybody. So where can people find you? Well, the new edition of the book, Getting Things Done, it's in 28 languages. So just go to your favorite bookstore, you know, and you can get that. That's the manual for all of this. You can always go to gettingthingsdone.com, our website, and you can click onto our global partners and you'll see where trainings and coaching are going on around the world about all this stuff. If you want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into it. Uh, I'm GTD guy on Twitter. I'm D Allen 45 on Instagram. So I'm around, right. you know, stick around. Awesome. And, and let's, I like to end on one last thing. Maybe there was something in the call that we already covered, or maybe there's something you're present to now. So for aspiring authors, people really looking to build something uh, remarkable with nonfiction educational books, um, what would be your one piece of advice to kind of leave them with? And we may have already covered it, but I like to end on it. Your head's not for having ideas. Your head's for having ideas, but not for holding them. That is really good. I love it. Well, David, that is such a great place to end. Thank you so much. You have uh, just a real pleasure to talk with. Ben, this was fun. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my man. If you want more interviews like this, check us out at tonicbooks.online. In addition to other resources, we've made dozens of interviews like this to support aspiring and established authors who want to write, publish, and market their book with ease and impact. For more details, check out the description below.